guys, I'm Dr. McFarland and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna make my first preset on the FM3 Mark II Turbo and let's just see how easy it is. So I'm currently on an empty preset and how I got there was I went to the preset pages using my page left and right arrows from the home screen and then I was able to use my navigation left and right buttons. And the empty presets start at 384. So that's the one I have and I press enter and that brings me into the screen where it actually shows me my scenes, but I wanna to get to the layout. So I'm gonna push on the layout encoder right here. We can see it says layout. So push that, and now I have an empty grid. And on the far left, there's a zoom button. So I can zoom that fully out. So I can see the full 12 by four grid. So now using the navigation buttons, we can go up and down or left and right pretty much anywhere on the grid. But first we want to make a row of shunts. And how to do that is you're gonna hold and press enter. And it's gonna make shunts all the way across. And for some reason it's not let me make a shunt on the first row. So I'm just gonna go with it and we're gonna move on. So now from here, once we highlight the different blocks with our navigation arrows, we can use the big wheel here and we're gonna set it to input one. So after we press enter to finalize that selection there, I'm gonna scroll all the way to the end. Now we're gonna go and choose out one, and I'm gonna press enter. And now I should have some guitar sound. And that does not sound too inspiring right now, but when we go add an amp and a cab, we can get more tone going. So I'm not gonna have too many things before the amplifier, so I'm just gonna put uh, the amp kinda in the middle here and start turning my dial until we get the amp and press enter. Go over to the left, turn the dial, and it's gonna give me a cabinet. So now when I play, I get this. <laughs> Now from here, you can choose clean amps, crunchy amps, lead stuff, whatever you feel like the song calls for, or maybe you're recording a part, and you just need a certain sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and change out my cab first, and I'm gonna to go to edit. And using my navigation buttons, I can scroll down to number one, and then use my wheel here to choose different amps. But this is the slow way of doing it. So if you actually press enter, you can go into the cab picker, and now you can use your arrow keys to go over a little bit faster. And we have some one by 12s and all kinds of cool stuff. And we're gonna choose a deluxe reverb cab and maybe put a Royer 121 on there. Now, depending on the cab you choose, it could have a drastically different sound. Okay, so from there we can press exit and that sounds fine to me. So we chose number 279 and we can exit back out. Then use our navigation arrow to go over to the amp, press edit. And now we are currently on the Fox ODS, but I can go over and say, I want a deluxe reverb normal. Okay, and that's still a little dirty for me. So we can go and maybe turn the gain down. And I use my page left and right arrows to get to the different pages across the top. So we want to be on the tone page. We can adjust our gain. And maybe bring up the bass, bring down the treble. And if it's still too dirty for you, just keep bringing the gain down. I am playing on a humbucker pickup, so. And now maybe it's too much bass. I want to bring up the treble. And notice that my out one clip was, so that let me know I'm a little bit too loud. I'll show you how to adjust your output levels a little bit later. We also have a thing called input EQ. And what I like about this is we can actually go down to where our E encoder is changing the definition. And this is really neat. So when we turn it, we can actually 
change the shape of the EQ all with one definition knob. So we can have less bass and more treble. Or we can do the opposite. So to me, it's just really fast and easy to do that and just change the overall tone. We can also have a high cut, so we can take a lot of that highness out if we want. And it still leaves a bump there to still retain a little bit of high-end EQ. The C parameter can do a low cut, something like that, so maybe around 100 hertz. So there's all kinds of options there to adjust your sound, even without changing the knobs on the amp. And this is just the overall uh, graphic EQ, and then we can change our preamp options, which I'm not gonna deal with that right now. But notice how we have a top row of parameters and we have a grayed out bottom row. To get to that bottom row, we just need to hit the navigation down button and it gets us to another option here. So we could have a cut on and off, we could have a fat on and off, bright cap, adjustment, high treble, all kinds of different stuff there. Power amp section, we can change our power tubes, our bias, our feedback. Uh, I can leave that to you to experiment with. We do have a power supply option and our speaker. And dynamics is actually really cool because you can add a little bit of compression to your sound without actually having a compressor block. So what I can do here is start bringing up my output compression. And if you notice the gain down here, it shows you the gain reduction versus having it off. We begin just the compressor threshold. So maybe you don't want to compress all the time, especially when you're plucking lightly. So when you really dig in, that's when it's going to compress and we can adjust the output compression from there or bring back the threshold a little bit. And I really like that option, that's really cool. Uh, under advanced, we have a lot of different parameters in here. There's like FR, FR output mode, all kinds of stuff. Um, input gain, trim, really not gonna mess with a lot of this stuff. And we do have a bypass mode down there, but you can get to that on a different page as well. So we can press exit, and now we have our deluxe reverb clean tone. All right, so now let's go add a reverb toward the end. And unfortunately for the FM3, we only have one reverb block. So this is gonna be uh, just a good all around reverb, nothing too crazy. Now press edit and maybe we go for a uh, medium spring. Now, while you're in this area here, you can use your page left and right to get to the next page, and you can adjust your mix, you can adjust your time, if you want like a super long reverb. Stuff like that. Uh, we can also navigate down and bring up some mod. And also maybe change the rate. And we can do like number of springs, all kinds of stuff. We'll take the mod depth back down. Maybe we wanna add some drive to our spring. Stuff like that. So all kinds of different options there. We'll go back up and change our mix and go over one block. We're gonna go add a delay, press enter, and then we're going to press edit. And there's just a slew of options in here. Not gonna get too crazy in this example, but let's just go with a uh, analog mono and we can go over and adjust our mix. <laughs> Just 
just our feedback, which is the number of repeats. And this area here is our tempo. So we can actually change it from eighth notes to quarter notes, dotted eights. Now notice that we don't have a tap tempo and a tuner in our switch view right now, but we do have this little button right here, so I can tap that in. Okay, pretty cool. I can exit out of that. I feel like my reverb is a little too much. Let's just bring down the time to about just a few seconds. Something like that. So I do like a good old tremolo. So let's bring in a trim block. And it's in the T's. All these are in alphabetical order. And we can press enter. And we can press edit. And here's a tremolo. Page over to config. We can change the depth, change the rate. Now, if you're the kind of person that likes, a, likes the tap tempo in all your effects, so you have a certain tempo instead of just being milliseconds, we can change this to anything we want. So let's go over and let's make it like core notes. It's a little too slow for me. There's eighth note. Tap that in. Okay, not too bad. We can uh, bypass that for now by using the second rotary encoder down here and just push and bypass. Now, another thing we, we can do is you notice that we have channel A right there. We can actually turn this knob and get to channel B of the same block. And now when we go into edit, I can go back a page and let's say I want this to be a bias trim. Something like that. And then go back. Maybe we do channel C for the same effect. And we'll make it an optical trim just for one more. Configure. Change my tempo. So using different channels allows you to use those channels in different scenes. So even though you might have one block, you can change the channel and get a totally different tremolo sound if you want. So with that said, we can actually go to our drive block and we can do the same thing. So let's go add a drive, press enter. I'm actually gonna go bypass my trim here. Go back over to the drive, hit edit. And you can see we have just tons and tons of drive options. Uh, so we got BB preamp. Let's go and turn down my delay mix a little bit. And maybe bypass that for now. Let's check our reverb. All right, the reverb is fine. We're gonna turn off the delay and just go to our drive, hit edit and just so many different options here. Bender fuzz. There's a blues OD.
One of my favorites is the OCD from Full Tone. <laughs> And any sound that you hear and you but maybe you don't like, we can go and adjust that. So let's go bring our drive down, maybe our tone down. And you want to make sure to always bypass the effect so you can compare your clean sound to the affected sound. In the initial stage of that pedal, the volume was all the way up and it was just way too loud. So bypass it, check the sound, turn it back on. Name that tune. Okay, so we can go to EQ and have even finer adjustment over that drive pedal. The mix page is usually where you change your bypass mode and we'll look into that in another video. Uh, but yeah, we got just so many options. But now that we're here, so let's say channel A, as it says on the screen, is my compulsion distortion HP, but channel B can be a tone king. We can go adjust that level, bypass it. Okay, that's pretty good. We can do another one here. Uh, let's go to channel C. And I really like the Timmy. And then maybe we do one more. So one more channel by pushing, and then let's go to, uh, I like the shred distortion, it's really cool. And once again, we're gonna bypass it. Make sure our overall volume is not too crazy. And now we have a drive block with four different channels that we can call up at any time when we change scenes. So here's a little tip for you. Since the FM3 only has one amp block and maybe you don't wanna have gaps when you switch from a clean sound to a dirty sound, the best way more than likely is going to have a clean amp that you feel like is a good overall core sound or core foundation of your tone and then just use drive pedals to bring stuff in and out. So in another video, I'm gonna show you how to set up scenes and change between these different channels using those scenes. And if you like what you see and wanna know more, then be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell. And until next time, I'm Dr. McFarland. I'll see you in the next video. Keep rocking.